Hey everyone, and welcome back. This is a video topic I've been thinking about for quite some time, and I've got a ton of subscriber requests for it. I'm often asked what my favorite Harley engine is, or what's the best Harley engine. Well friends, today's the day we're going to talk about it, so grab yourself a beverage and kick back. Let's get to it. Every Harley engine family certainly has its loyal following. Those that love a knuckle or pan will tell you those are the best Harley engines ever. Undoubtedly, you will hear people from the Shovelhead era tell you that that was the best Harley engine ever. You'll hear folks from the Evo days tell you it was the best, and of course, the same can be said for Twin Cam and EM8. There are earlier engine families too, like Flatheads, Singles, the, and the little known first true Twin Cam, which was back in 1915. And side note, it was also an eight valve engine, but it was built for racing. Some of these early engines didn't even use a cam to open the intake valves. This early tech was called intake suction valves, and they would open thanks to the downstroke of the piston, but I digress. For the purpose of the video, let's focus on what I will call the more modern engines, starting with the shovel head, which ran from 1966 to 84. Now, the shovel head was the replacement for the pan head, and from 66 through 1969, it remained virtually the same, keeping the generator style bottom end of the pan head. In 1970, which was also the first year Harley would wear an AMF badge, there was a big improvement to the shovel with an alternator style charging system and a nose cone gear, gear case. There were also other changes, like moving to a Zenith Bendix carburetor and then going from 74 to 80 cubic inch in 1977. There were many other changes along the way as well. Remember, we were in the middle of a gas crisis, so the motor company had to adjust to poor fuel quality and lower compression ratios and electronic ignitions to combat the fuel problems. The shovel head was beefy. It had a large, heavy-duty square top connecting rods, huge 3-8 valve stems, and a very thick and robust engine case. The later years of the shovel came with many more great improvements as Harley had more money from AMF. Uh, the technology was improving and market demand was steadily increasing, so Harley had to respond with more reliable engines. But they weren't without their issues. Throughout the shovel head's run, the engine had many different changes to it, which were mainly to improve power, improve cooling, and oil consumption. They did run hot. Uh, oil would also pool in the top of the cylinder heads, causing it to burn oil as it leaks past the intake valve stem. Uh, the steel valve guides that they used in 79 would cause the valves to seize and absolutely destroy the top end or stick a valve and it would get noisy. Uh, they would also sump. No, something isn't new. And guess what else? They leaked oil. Now for the next generation of engine, and the one most would say saved Harley-Davidson from bankruptcy, was the Evolution. The Evolution engine was first introduced in 1984, and it ran through 2000. Uh, and it came in at 1340ccs, but as a side note, even though everyone calls it 80 cubic inches. That's actually 81.7 cubic inches. Not 80, but 80 sounds better. And after the management buyout in 1981, the Evo really did set Harley on a new path with a more reliable engine, increased power, and reduced cost of ownership. Uh, they ran cooler. They had aluminum cylinders. The valve train was improved. It was lighter. Uh, machining processes were continuously improving, which reduced oil leaks. But Evos weren't without their issues either. Uh, just to name four, uh, 84 to 86, uh, the production run, uh, they used crankcases uh, with the sandcast method, made through the sandcast method. And then shortly after the launch, the factory moved to die castings. Uh, the change in casting production and inferior quality aluminum led to porosity issues, cracking issues, and there was quite a significant number of Evo engine cases being changed under warranty. But by 92, 93, the problem was much better, uh, better still. From then on and up into its final production year, it kept improving. Of course, Harley owners saw the introduction of fuel injection in 95 with the Magnetic Morelli systems. Uh, hated by most people, I actually always found that in the right hands, the Mag, Mag Morelli systems ran just fine. Evos occasionally would also have low oil pressure issues. 
and some years resulting in the uh, occasional noisy top end because the lifters couldn't stay pumped up and and if they sat long enough yes oil would drain into the crankcase through the oil pump filling it with oil also known as sumping sumping's not new and when you fire the bike up you would get this huge blast of oil out of your crankcase breather but that's for another episode now by the end of its run the evo had become a very solid long-lasting power plant I, I will add I can't completely agree that AMF was bad. I also can't agree that the Evo engine alone is what saved the motor company. It was AMF's money, after all, that began the development of the Evo engine. And with the Harley Owners Group being introduced in 1983, it gave Harley owners a sense of family and belonging, right? A, a person could buy a motorcycle and be part of a group of like-minded people without having to join a 1% club. It tied people to the company. That built brand loyalty and improved sales. So, thanks AMF and Hog. At 99 saw the introduction of the Twinkie. No, not that Twinkie. I'm talking about the Twin Cam. Uh, this new engine brought out brand new owners, and with the success of all the biker build-off shows and such, uh, the Twin Cam was off to a great start. There are many good things to say about the early twin cam models. Overall, the primaries and clutches were great. Compensators were solid and reliable. The five-speed transmission was near bulletproof. At 06 and earlier crankshafts kept strong square top connecting rods. The Delphi fuel injection was rock solid and reliable. And the bike overall was easier to maintain. Now, common oil leaks were a thing of the past, and the aftermarket absolutely exploded with parts and accessories and performance goodies. But yes, they had their issues too. Uh, from, and most of you will know about all these, from the spring-loaded cam chain tensioners to the INA inner cam bearings exploding, more porosity issues with cylinder head castings in around 2004, uh, noisy top ends, lifter failures, valve stem seal failures. The twin cam had its occasional problem as well. Uh, of course, from here, we could go on to talk about the later year twin cams, let's say the second generation starting in 2007, and then we could move to the M8, but uh, I've done so many videos on those engines, I think you guys know already. I can't say I have a single favorite Harley engine. Each has their place, their benefits and their quirks. I, I love a shovel head because of how they look and they sound. I love nostalgia. I enjoy how beefy the parts are when I work with them. I also enjoy bringing a vintage engine back to life and preserving the heritage. I, I, I say I like the Evo for the same reasons, but I consider the Evo to be the first generation of modern Harley engines and not really vintage in my mind, per se. I particularly love them both because I'm always amazed at how bad and worn a shovel and Evo can be yet they will still run. It is quite amazing. Uh, these two were also the last of the engines where a, a fellow with some basic tools, general knowledge, and a service manual could pretty much rebuild one and it run well. Now there's a lot to be said for that. I love the twin cam because of its reliability. Big power can be made from a twin cam and it live a very long time when done proper. Even bigger power can be had with an M8, and that is certainly a reason to love it too. But there is one key element we must remember about all of these engines and our personality uh, as owners. Uh, we all love performance. Most of us want to maximize power output. It's fun and it makes us feel good. <laughs> but we also love reliability and low maintenance. There is a reason the GM 427 in the muscle car era was 425 horsepower. For the same reason the 327 was 350. And the 70 LS6 Chevelle 454 was rated at 450 horsepower. There is a bit of an unspoken rule in the engine world that achieving one horsepower per cubic inch will provide great performance for the engine size without stretching the bounds of reliability. Both the 80-inch shovel and Evo came in around 50 to 60 horsepower from the factory, depending on the model. The 88-inch twin cam averaged around 80 horsepower stock, and the 107 M8 close to 95. Starting to see a pattern here? Each are below or are getting close to that one horsepower per cubic inch mark. 
Now, one of the biggest differences in all of these comes with the M8 and the ability to bolt on so much more power than previous years. That's a good reason to love an M8, right? But as an owner, you have to keep this in mind if you want to maintain reliability and performance when you choose your upgrades and how far you really want to go. Regardless of the engine format, the further you get away from one horsepower per cubic inch, there will be other parts you need to buy to support that power, and there will be nuances that come with each of them. All that said, my favorite Harley engine is the one I'm building right now. But if I had to choose the engine that makes me giggle when I hear it and gives me this wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling every time I see one, I'm going to say hand me a shovel head. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you think I've earned it, please do hit the button, hit the reminder bell uh, so you'll get notifications on the next video. And uh, upcoming, we've got some tool tech videos and more build videos and things like that. So as always, thank you for the members for supporting this channel every month. You guys are awesome. Thanks to the subscribers. Remember, we've got a goal, 100,000 subs by December 31st, my birthday. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.